In this video, I want to teach you how to get started with keeping a set of books for property owners and flippers uh, according to the bulletproof method of doing this. And we're going to start with a few top level things. But very quickly, if you didn't see the previous video, please go back and watch that video before you watch this one. There's important context that you'll be missing if you haven't gone through that video, then come back and resume this one. And as a quick recap, in that video, I mentioned that this business model is complex. I learned about this stuff actually by working with a company, working with a guy who had written a book on it many, many years ago. And after just having a few uh, talks with him and glancing through his book quickly, I got the concepts. And because I had the accounting fundamentals down, that's all I really needed to pick up the basic concepts for how to structure things. And I was able to kind of run with it and go from there. So what I'm really trying to say is it just means that a little bit of effort is going to be required to learn this as opposed to just figuring it out. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how the basic setup works uh, with respect to property flippers and owners. And we're gonna start with a few high level things here. So we're gonna be looking at your QBO settings, right? The settings in the QuickBooks Online general settings area. We're gonna look at your chart of accounts. This is critical. This is where it does get very complex because in effect, we're accounting for two very, very different but sort of tangent business models, right? The flippers and construction and the, and the rental properties, we need to section off the chart of accounts properly in order to get this done in such a way that our financial reports make it really clear what we're looking at and what it's telling us, right? So QBO settings, the chart of accounts, and what, what comes after the chart of accounts setup is your products and services list. The products and services are going to be the things that describe in detail the different things that we're either accumulating for construction purposes or charging for in the case of the rental properties, such as are we picking up a security deposit or the monthly rent? Is it a prorated deposit? So on and so forth, right? So the course will teach you how to set all this up from scratch. What I want to do here is show you what it looks like once it's all been set up. Many of you will be able to look at this and and you'll just say, okay, I get this. I'm going to go run with it. And I encourage you to do that. In fact, I would encourage you to invest the money, set up your own sort of sample QuickBooks online company so you can follow along with these videos, pause me, look at what I've got going on screen and go set that up for yourself. And of course, then when the course launches, I'll be able to give you that much more handholding, but you'll be that much better prepared for going into what you're going to learn once you're into the course. So let's take a look at my screen real quick, real quick. And I'm going to walk you through exactly what this looks like. Okay. So as I mentioned, we want to start with the settings. So this assumes that you've got your QuickBooks Online company set up and we're looking at the overview. I'm in the accountant overview. Um, and we're going to go up here to the top right and click the gear icon. And we want to go to accountant settings. Now, no matter what company I'm setting up, no matter what industry they're in, the first thing I do is take my time to walk through every single setting in each of these sections. Why? Because I don't want to count on myself to just remember what I need to go set. I want to go section by section and look at each little setting and ask myself, is this something I need to change or tweak for this particular purpose, right? So I'm going to take you to the sort of high points of what I want to make sure you know how to set up. Okay, so let's jump into the expenses. And this is where I really want you to focus. This is very important. We need this turned on. It is not on by default where it says show items table on expense and purchase forms, especially for the construction side, but even for the property management. Um, well, I take that back for the construction side. We need the items table because you're, you're going to see how we're going to use the products and services area of QuickBooks Online to describe all the details of the construction from framing and electrical and demolition and all of that. Those details are going to live there so that we can keep it simple on the balance sheet. Okay, so absolutely, this has to be on, no exceptions. Uh, we also want to show the tags field just in case you choose to use that. It's just a great extra reporting mechanism that you can use. I don't plan on covering it specifically in this course. I will probably mention it along the way a few times. Um, but again, it can be a very useful reporting dimension should you need something beyond what's otherwise already sort of included and being used. And we also need to track expenses and items by customer. This is true for the flippers and the property owner's side. So this definitely has to be turned on and I'm pretty sure it's not on by default. So make sure all of these options are turned on. 
this one you probably won't need, but you know what, when in doubt, turn it on. It's not gonna cost you any extra, okay? So these are critically important things to change before you even begin recording transactions, right? And that's the main thing for the settings, but like I said, I wanna stress, you should go through every single one of these areas and make sure that you've you know, adjusted for everything that you need to. The next thing I wanna walk you through is the chart of accounts. This has to be in place before you can look at your products and services, by the way, um, because your products and services have to get mapped to certain accounts in the chart of accounts. So it literally has to be set up in that order, otherwise you'll have a problem. Okay, so let's look at the chart of accounts. And in the course, you've got a very detailed template that you will be able to, you know, make adjustments to, to tweak it, to suit your own, needs and you know account for things maybe that are specific to the client that you're serving uh, that i haven't accounted for but this is a pretty thorough intense chart of accounts you'll also see and i've mentioned this uh, a number of times recently in some of my social media posts and other videos i've done that for the first time in my career i'm actually supporting the use of account numbers and doing it here and suggesting that you do it here. And the reason goes back to something I mentioned, which is that we are really dealing with two different but tangent business models here where the accounting is very different. And so we need the account numbers so that we can organize the chart of accounts and group things and position them in the places where we need them on the balance sheet so that it makes sense. And if you rely on things being alphabetical, it's just gonna to be too much work, frankly, to try and be creative about how you name things. And at the same time, have a balance sheet that really makes sense. And these days I'm, I'm less against account numbers than I used to be because one of my concerns with account numbers was you used to have to look things up by account number once you decided to use them. That's no longer the case. I can still look things up by name very easily in a drop down. So, so bottom line, definitely want account numbers for this. It will make it so much easier to organize your chart of accounts the way you'll see here. Right, and in order to avoid painting myself into a corner per se, you know, by running out of room in, in an account number sequence, we're using a five figure sequence, meaning we start with assets at 10,000 and we go from there. So that it leaves us plenty of space in between numbers to, you know, so that we don't run out of room. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like. We have our checking account. We actually have two checking accounts here, okay. Um, and then we have an escrow clearing account. We're definitely gonna need that for when we purchase real estate, right? And those purchases clear through. Now we get to the meat. Here's your construction projects. And you'll notice there is not space in the construction section for all the different properties you have. Okay, we're going to use other mechanisms to track the different properties. This keeps the balance sheet nice and clean. So all of your construction goes under construction projects right? You have the original cost of a property, the closing costs, the carrying costs, and then finally the actual construction and progress for the construction expenses you incur in fixing up the property that you're going to flip. Then here we have the rental properties in their own section, okay? And further down, I have an example of uh, a rental property that we have on the book. So rental properties, properties that we're gonna keep, they do need to have their own section on the balance sheet. So we have, you know, one, two, three Main Street, the original cost, and we divide up land and building as long as that information's available. It normally should be, sometimes it's not, right? That's the main area. Then we get into the liabilities and we'll have construction loans, right? For the flipper part. And we have the mortgage for a property that's under construction. And then we have mortgages for properties that we're keeping, such as rental, right? And so again, we need to be very clear. The loans do need to each be separate account per loan per property, right? That's really important to keep the balance sheet clean. But one of the big tricks to this is how everything is consolidated for construction purposes into one set of accounts because we have other reporting mechanisms, which I'll cover in the course in more detail, that will allow us to be able to carve that up and look at what's inside of those accounts for one particular property. But let's go to products and services. And just very quickly, you'll see under construction, we have all this detail, right? And this is why we need those these items to be available when you record the expenses, because this is where we want to record those details. And that's what enables us to keep it really simple on the balance sheet. So I could still get detailed reporting to see what I spent on steel, stairs and railings, whatever you need to look at. And there's a video in the course that of course shows you how to you know pull the reports to show things by item and so on and so forth, okay? And then the rental items are a lot simpler. We have late fees, monthly rent, and security deposit. For the most part, that's literally all we need for the uh, rental, you know, the property owner or rental 
side of the business. So now you've seen the basic QuickBooks settings that need to be in place, how we structure the chart of accounts to organize things based on the different business models and then within the construction in particular, which is the more complex, more detailed one, you know, exactly what things look like from the assets and construction and progress down to the construction loans that I showed you. And of course the products and services list and how detailed that needs to be. And, you know, I gave you a glance at the uh, template, which of course is included. Now the reality is even with what I've shown you here, which I think is a lot, I'm just scratching the surface. And as I mentioned, the course is going to teach you how to set all this up from scratch from a QuickBooks online company that you've just started today that has nothing in it. In the next video, I'm going to actually show you what I believe is kind of the big secret to how this works. It's going to be just diving a little deeper on some of the stuff you've already seen here, but I just want to drive it home really crystal clear for you exactly what the whole secret is to how this works to how once you learn the concepts that I'm teaching you it will not only not be complex anymore it's going to get really easy and you're going to realize what an incredible opportunity you have here now that you're learning this to serve a niche where as I've mentioned there's very high demand and very short supply which means you can get paid more for doing what you do because it literally is a higher value than what others are doing.